What's up my beautiful entrepreneurs? One thing I really struggled with was finding a really good recipe for my body butter and really understanding what percents to use for what. So in this video, I wanted to share a step-by-step -step guide of making your body butter so that you can have a body butter in the texture and consistency that you are looking for. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so for this recipe, I'll have the full recipe down below along with percentages so that you'll be able to try and test out this recipe. It's really important to always have percentages when you're working with formulas for any of your skincare recipes because you want to know how much of each ingredient you're using precisely so that you can know how many ounces or grams, depending on how you decide to measure, how many of how much of each you should have so that you can always make the same recipe over and over again. You always want to have that consistency especially since we're selling these products you want to make sure that it's consistent throughout the whole entire board and that's one thing that's really big on my channel is always making sure that we have consistency with our products so that our customers will return and get the same thing over and over again now when it comes to this formula i am going to have shea butter now shea butter is a really good uh, beginner um, butter to have when it comes to your formulation because it's soft yet firm butter it has a melting point of 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it has a, a pretty fair high melting point along with the other butters in the, that you're gonna be using in the formula. And it really helps as an anti-inflammatory. It helps to um, get rid of any dark spots that you have on your skin. It helps to clear your skin, smooth your skin, and it really helps create that protective layer. It's a great ingredient for people who have uh, extremely dry skin because it really helps to lock in moisture. So shea butter is a really good option. Now, when it comes to the shea butter that you have, there is a um, refined and unrefined shea butter. Now your unrefined shea butter is going to be in its natural state. So it's going to have more of a nutty aroma and it's gonna have a more strong yellow tint to it versus the aroma, and it's gonna have a more strong yellow tint to it versus the um, um fraction the the refined versus the refined shea butter that is going to have more of a white tint to it that I've noticed, maybe slightly yellow, but it doesn't have as much of a nutty aroma. So this is a really good option for when you want to create different scents as well so that it's not um, overly pungent with the um, nutty aroma that the un- uh, refined shea butter will have. So definitely um, take a look at that when it comes to buying and what it is you're looking for as far as scent goes. Now the next ingredient I have is going to be cocoa butter. Now cocoa butter is a really great ingredient because it helps to bring more firmness to your formula and it won't make it, um, it'll bring up the melting point for your overall formula. So cocoa butter, now when you purchase it, it's, it sometimes comes in a big block. Now when I first bought it, I got one in a big block and it was in a, in, a, in a bin and I had to literally carve out the pieces that I want in order to measure it out properly. So when you're purchasing this make sure they have it in pebbles or you can get it in like cocoa chips so it looks like little like um like those little chocolate chip like wafer rounds and i'll have it linked down below so that you can get those exact ones but it really helps when it comes to measuring and you're not wasting time trying to carve out all of the cocoa butter that you want because it is a very hard rock hard so it takes up a lot of time so definitely get the wafers because it'll make life so much easier and it really just helps to bring back the firmness to your formula to kind of counteract the softness of the shea butter that you've added so it's a really great ingredient now for the next ingredient i have unfractionated coconut oil now unfractionated coconut oil is going to be solid in, at room temperature and it's going to have more of a like a firm consistency to it versus um, fractionated coconut oil which is going to be a liquid consistency and it doesn't harden up now if you swap these out you're going to have a lot softer of a body butter which i know you're not looking for you want it to have those firm soft peaks so to use fractionated coconut oil would really cause a more um, fluffier light um, body body butter and you want it to have that firmness to it so it is a butter consistency and it feels more of like a lotion and butter versus it um, melting because that's essentially what would happen it will melt a lot faster because of the fractionated coconut oil so just keep that in mind. Now with this um, unfractionated coconut oil, this is going to be at 76 degrees uh, Fahrenheit as the, its melting point. So it's a really good add-on into the formula to keep that firmness as well once it all cools down. 
Um, then I'm going to be adding beeswax. Now the beeswax I'm going to be using at 5% because it's a really, it's really hard. So it's going to um, create a lot more firmness for the uh, body butter as well to kind of help keep it together and, and bring up the melting point as well. But the thing with beeswax is that it's so hard that if you use too much of it, so I'm talking about like using 20% to 30% of it in your formula, you're going to have a really rock hard, maybe more or less like a balm like consistency to your uh, your body butter now if you're looking for that then th that's a different set of formula but for a body butter you want to have a really small amount so it can bring that firmness and those benefits to the body butter but it's not going to be too hard so i'm only going to be using that at five percent in this formula now I ran into the same issue with beeswax as I did with the cocoa butter. So when you're buying the, um, the beeswax, get the little pebbles for beeswax that I'll have linked down below for you as well so that you will be able to easily measure that out instead of having to cut up the pieces. Cause I also received a block for the beeswax and I had to cut it. And beeswax is a lot harder to cut through than the cocoa butter was. So it was, it was literally Literally terrible so don't even go through that experience just get the little pebbles for it because it will just be um, a, a lot better now you will see two different kinds of beeswax that you can get there's like a more there's a yellow beeswax and then there's a, a white beeswax the biggest difference I saw with that is that the is the color and the smell so you'll have more of a yellow tint to your overall you'll see that in your overall formula and it has a stronger uh, beeswax like natural beeswax smell to it versus the white um, pebbles will so that's just another thing to think about if you're looking for a, a more of like a natural scent for your body butters and you don't want to add any scent at all having the, the the more naturally derived ingredients for all of your ingredients for your formula is a really good option because you'll have a more natural um, ingredient smell to it so it sounds it smells a lot more nutty more natural um, than the other ingredients that the smell is kind of extracted from so if that is what you're looking for with not having any scent i would definitely look for the more naturally derived ingredients for all of them so that all of it together will have a really nice nutty aroma um because i think that's a really good option as well but if you're looking for the option to create a lot of um, different colors a lot of scents for your products get the um on the refined versions because it will have a lighter color, a lighter scent to them so that you can kind of be able to more manipulate your products overall. Okay, so this next ingredient is one of my favorites. It really helps to stabilize and to add more thickness to your overall formula. And this is gonna be stearic acid. Now stearic acid, it has a melting point of 157 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a really high melting point. It allows your body butters to stay a lot more firm without adding the butters or oils in order to get, gain that thickness and high melting point. So it just stabilizes the ingredients while still allowing you to have that nice um, luxury feel and it also adds a lot more softness it takes out some of the dryness from using the shea butter cocoa butter making it a lot more soft and making your body butter a lot more of a luxurious feel and a lot less greasy so i think this is a really great ingredient to um, to add in and what, when i use this i take out some of the shea butter and i took out some of the cocoa butter in order to add in this the stearic acid so i can have that um, that balance from the butters that i already have in the formula now the usage rate for stearic acid is going to be 1 to 25 percent but i will be using 10 percent in this particular formula now like i said it is beginning of the video when it comes to the percentages it really depends on the look and feel that you're looking for your body butter and if you are looking for more of a luxurious feel the systeric acid is going to really allow you to have that so that's why I'm saying that having the percentages set for each ingredient is really important so that you can understand how each ingredient is affecting the formula overall now the next ingredient is going to be arrowroot powder and I also have vitamin E oil. Now with the arrowroot powder it's going to really help with the greasiness as well so it kind of helps the stearic acid in that aspect and also adds in a luxurious feel as well. Now what I like about 
the arrowroot powder is the powdery finish that you get from using um, the arrowroot powder and I only use this at 5% in this particular formula but you can honestly um, use less depending on how much of a dry feel you want for the body butter you can add or take away and now a great alternative for arrowroot powder is going to be like cornstarch or even kaolin and clay now when it comes to the cornstarch I feel like it doesn't give as much of a luxurious feel and powdery finish as the arrowroot powder um, but it's a really good alternative and it is worth a shot to see how you like it in your formula I just find that the arrowroot powder has more of that luxurious feel and powdery finish that you're typically looking for when it comes to your body butter. Now with the vitamin E oil, this is not a preservative. It is an antioxidant that helps to um, keep the um, the butters and oils from going rancid and it helps to extend the shelf life of your body butter. So it is a highly recommended, if not mandatory um, item to have in your formulas when it comes to your body butters and even your body oils and sugar scrubs. So definitely have vitamin E oil as a constant ingredient in all of your products. Products. Now, when you're making your body butter, there are steps that you're gonna to wanna to take in order to make it come out properly. So in the beginning phase, you're going to have all your oil phase. Now this is where you're gonna be melting down all of your oils. So you're gonna take your shea butter, you're gonna take the cocoa butter, beeswax, um, the unfractionated coconut oil, and the stearic acid, and you're going to put that in a heat safe bowl on a double boiler. Now you're gonna allow all of the you're gonna allow all of the oils to melt down and marry together. Now, one thing that I typically do when I'm making, especially with a big batch, is that I melt down the beeswax first because the beeswax takes a lot longer, I've found, than any of the other ingredients that I have. And you don't want the oils to be sitting on the heat for too long because then you're going to be overheating it, which takes away the benefits from the um, oils and that's, defeats the purpose of you making the formula to begin with. So you wanna make sure that you melt that down and then I add in the, the other ingredients slowly so that it doesn't instantly uh, cool down the beeswax again and then I have to do the reheating all over. So then I add it in uh, slowly so that it brings up the temperature and then I'll add in the other ingredients so that it'll all uh, melt down together. Now from there you're going to take it off of the double boiler and you're going to allow it to completely cool down. And a lot of times I'll do this in the fridge. I'll keep it in the fridge to allow it to cool down or I'll even put it in the freezer. Depending on how big of a batch you're doing, if you have a really big batch, then I'll put it in the freezer because it'll help it to cool down a lot faster. And you want it to be, you want it to solidify, but you don't want it to be hard. So you want to allow it to solidify to be able to, um, to be able to whip it. Now with the cool down phase, there's a lot of things that can kind of go wrong during this phase. So you really wanna make sure that you are really on it when it comes to this part. Now in the cool down phase, you're taking it off of the double boiler and you're allowing everything to cool down and to solidify. Now you can either do this in the fridge or in the freezer. The fridge will take um, a little bit longer than you putting it in the freezer. But when it comes to the cool down phase, you wanna make sure that you are constantly stirring and scraping down, down the sides of the bowl so that everything is still marrying together and you're not gonna get all these solidified pieces and um, parts around the rim of your bowl. And then you also wanna make sure that you're not allowing it to cool down too much because then what can happen is that you start to get all these pebbles and pieces within your your uh, body butter and it's really hard to whip those out. So it's gonna take you even a lot longer. Sometimes you might even have to melt it down and then put it back in the freezer so that it's gonna all be evened out again. So you're not getting all of these little tiny pieces. So a really good thing to do is to set a timer when you are actually in the cool down phase. Now I allow it, depending on how big your batch is, I allow it to cool down for about an hour, but then you wanna make sure that you're creating a timer for checking it every like 10 to 15 minutes so that you can, again, scrape down the sides to make sure that everything is cooling down properly and together. Um, and then from there you can, um, what I'll do is I'll whip it in between 
to help it cool down a little bit more and then I'll add it into the freezer because it's not gonna get those soft peaks immediately. So as you, you whip it, you're kind of creating those peaks a little bit and allowing it to cool down and then putting it back into the freezer. It's just really important to make sure that you don't allow it to over cool because it'll be a lot harder to mix and a lot harder to um, incorporate the the uh, peaks that you're looking for when it comes to the body butter. Now, after the cool down phase, this is a great time to add in your arrowroot powder. Once you've had everything cooled down and you're able to whip it, this is a great time to add in your arrowroot powder. You can add in your fragrance as well and the vitamin E at this time. So those are the ingredients that you're gonna add in at the cool down phase once everything is fully cooled down. Cause so this will allow everything to easily incorporate. And also with the vitamin E, you don't wanna add it in at too high of a uh, temperature. You wanna make sure that it's completely cool so that you're not losing any of its, its benefits by having it at too high of a melting point. So you wanna make sure that you're allowing everything to cool down so that those ingredients are as effective as possible in your ingredients. Now, when it comes to preservative, you don't have to add a preservative to your body butter, but I know some people do anyways. But if you are, again, this is a good time to add in the preservative. You don't wanna add in preservatives right out of right from it being everything being melted down because that is too high of a temperature to add in preservatives make sure that you're researching the preservatives that you are using because they do have different stages and temperatures that they should be added into your formulas so make sure that you are looking out for that and a lot of the um, suppliers that supply preservatives they will let you know at what temperature you should be adding in the preservatives so that you are getting the most effective use out of the preservatives that you are adding. Now everything is incorporated and you have your beautifully whipped body butter and it's so smooth and beautiful and has all the nice peaks and it's uh, silky smooth like you are looking for. Now with this formula, I really enjoy it because it really has a nice luxury feel. It's not too oily and it's really soft and it's lightweight. Um, as you will notice as you let it sit, because after you've you freshly whipped it, it'll still have a more of a light fluffy feel to it but as it cools down you'll start to see that it'll start to to harden just a little bit but it'll still have a nice soft feel to it and it'll just be really luxurious and beautiful i really love this formula because you have the all the butters that you're looking for but the stearic acid really helps to bring it together because it helps to stabilize and bring more texture to the formula without adding more oiliness to it so i think this is a really good powerful ingredient that you can add Add without having more butters or adding in more oil and you still have like that nice natural um, body butter feel that you're looking for so I really love this recipe I think it's something that's really excellent to try at the end of making your formula a really good thing to start adding in is any colorant that you are looking for now if that's something that you're interested in and figuring out how to add colorant to your body butter watch this video here where I describe the best ways to add in color to your products so that you can have the most vibrant products that you can and I'll catch you in the next one.